and welcome to our fourth quarter 2023 market update. How is the market? If we haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Jeremy Serier. I am the founder of Mansard. Um, we are a, a commercial real estate brokerage company based out of Andover. So we're just about 22, 23 miles northwest of downtown Boston. Um, we live in and have an office in the markets that we concentrate on, which are primarily the markets west and north of Boston um, into southern New Hampshire as our core markets. So what was the kind of the big news for the fourth quarter of 2023? Well, um, this is it. Jay Powell had a uh, meeting the third week of December and came out and said that it looks like in 2024, the Fed is going to be eyeing uh, rate cuts uh, based off of the inflation teaming that they're seeing in the data, as well as the um, investor outlook that sees rates topping off. And we saw that primarily in the bond market in the fourth quarter from mid-November to really the third third week of December, fourth week of December, where uh, the 10-year treasury fell almost, uh, geez, 100 basis points um, as investors started buying up bonds, anticipating that the dividend yields that they were getting uh, weren't going to be around much longer. So with that happening, um, we started to see some outlook, uh, I guess, getting a little more positive for 2024. But as we wrapped up the year, of 2023, you know, how did the market perform in retail, office, industrial, and flex sales? So what we saw here was the year ended at about 492 transactions. And interestingly, this puts us just a, well, about 30 deals, 35 deals over the uh, 2006 to 2023 average. So the average velocity is about 456 sales per year, uh, which kind of falls in line with about a 2015 or 2006 um, volume. And if you go back and look at 2015, what it costs to borrow money to invest in commercial real estate, rates were about 200 basis points less than they are right now. Um, so is the interest rate story the sole determinant for the volume? No, it is a brake pedal and a gas pedal for the market. So as those interest rates come up, um, it's like pumping the brakes on your car as they come down. Um, you know, it's like pump, stuffing on the gas. So we're seeing, we're definitely seeing the impact there. But overall, uh, we had a pretty busy year. And in fact, if you compare that to 2021, it feels like a massive correction. But when you look at the sales in terms of the overall volume of that market area, it's about average. Um, it's about an average year. Now, the story for the change of velocity is felt. I mean, we're, you know, you see it in the news and you hear about the, the deceleration in the market. Well, yeah, it was, it was down about 30% year over year. But 2024, I'm anticipating that we're going to start to see that level off and stabilize. Um, so, you know, that 30% change this is change in volume not pricing so just a deceleration of the market now the 10-year treasury we're finally starting to see this sort of uh, settle in um, where we had a lot of a lot of volatility in the 10-year and that volatility seems to be tapering at this point where we're now starting to see that percent change uh, level off. So these extreme swings um, may be finally starting to settle down into 2024. Um, so as that happens, it's going to make underwriting um, a little easier for valuation and projecting valuation on a multi-year time value money calculation easier. So as we look at 2023 and we compare it to the 2006 to 23 time period, we'll see that there are 456 transactions on average. 2023, there were 492 transactions. So we had slightly more transactions than the average volume. But what we did see was the dollar value in volume was down 
when compared to that long-term average. In fact, we saw the long-term average was about $2.8 billion down to about $2.1 billion. So what does this mean? This means that 2023 saw more transactions at lower price points than previous years on average. So what that means is that your 25 to $100 million deals, um, fewer of them were occurring. And that's because they are more interest rate sensitive than deals in that one to say $10 million range that have a little less, little less sensitivity to that leverage, the cost of leverage in valuation. So, so that really, you know, that partially explains it, but then you also saw a lot of investment capital leaving the market, sidelining, waiting, um, waiting for values to correct and adjust, waiting to see what, infl what inflation was going to do, waiting to see what the economy was going to do, was what we're going to see recession, or were we going to go into this the soft landing that everyone was talking about? Now, how about pricing? So on an average price per square foot, so this is taking all the sales data and then looking at it by year, on average, um, retail trending very, very nicely up into the right. Office surprisingly trending up into the right. Why is that? I'm going to talk about that in a minute. Flex correcting back to the trend line up into the right. Um, that bubble you see was driven primarily by lab and biotech deals uh, that were done in the wake of wake of COVID. And then the industrial market kind of kind of settling down a little bit, um, kind of kind of settling down. And we're, I'm going to talk about that. What's going on there? Now, Green Street they report on the U.S. commercial real estate market. So nationally, if we zoom out and we look at what's going on for the rest of the country overall, uh, we're seeing all property types when they're when we take an index approach, about a 10% adjustment in, in value, okay, according to Green Street. But the outlook, the sentiment for the market. It's actually improving. This is the Crepe Composite Index. It's the Commercial Real Estate Performance Index put out by the CCIM Institute. This shows us that we're seeing an upward trend in sentiment. Um, it you know, got pretty, pretty dismal there. Really fourth quarter of 22 into the, about the second quarter of 23, and then it started to started a rebound so this is showing data up through up through uh the end of october of 23 on sentiment so retail let's take a closer look retail in 2023 accounted for nearly half half of the sales in the three counties in fact there were 220 230 deals the third highest volume year since 2006 for retail so a lot of activity there a lot of activity and that that asset class really it 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 saw the the benefits of high occupancy and it saw the benefits of displaced spending that historically had been going into the workplace market that daytime population commuting into workplace locations and spending money um, that that money has been um, reallocated into the suburban markets as people are spending money closer to home. So as a result of that, suburban retail uh, north and west of Boston and southern New Hampshire has done very well. And we've seen pricing do very well. The year ended at an average price per square foot for retail at three hundred and six dollars a square foot. So strong year forecasting um, into the third quarter of 2024 for retail continues to remain a very strong asset class. This is a market cycle chart put out by Dr. Glenn Mueller. Um, he puts this out every quarter, gives a, a snapshot report of where the Boston MSA is today by asset class, but then also does a forecast three quarters ahead of where he expects the market to be. Um, generally, as I've looked back at his reports over the last decade or so, I find him to be uh, reasonably accurate and reliable, and it tends his data tends to correlate with what we're seeing on a local basis. 
the industrial market, 99 trades in 2023. Um, not the busiest year on record. In fact, it was somewhere between the 2016 and 2017 year by volume. Um, we saw quite a bit of activity decelerate in that 20 to $100 million segment. There were trades there, but not as, as many as there had been in the past. Um, what we did see were lower value trades happening. Um, and we also saw mills and things like that trading that actually affected that, um, that price per square foot basis. So as we see smaller or less functional, older um, industrial product trading, um, that, that is the data that we have to impute into the average pricing model to see where the market is. And in fact, it's, it's shown that it's softened a bit, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, use this and, and you know, paint the entire market at 150 a foot. We have to look at each asset individually on its own, but as, as an aggregate, the, the industrial market for what's selling um, is cooling a bit. It's cooling a bit. And I think it's gonna start to stabilize here. As we go into 24, you're gonna see this start to level off. We may not see the same volume of trades, um, but we're gonna see, we'll continue to see good activity, high demand, high occupancy, uh, but we're gonna see, I think we're gonna see pricing kind of stabilizing there. So again, the forecast looking out into the third quarter of 24, um, industrial still still strong. Um, so we're expecting it to continue to perform well in 24. Office. So the office market decelerated quite a bit and it was looking like, uh, based on our trending for 23, by the end of the year, we were gonna have about a 2010, 2011 volume, which was very low. Um, historically, but we ended up somewhere around 2012, 2000, yeah, like 2012, a little better than 2012, 101 sales in office, um, probably more than people would expect to see. But what's interesting is as we look at that market, why would the average price per square foot for an office buildings, for an office building in the suburbs, why would it appreciate when all you see on 60 Minutes in the Wall Street Journal is the office market is is in a terrible place. Well, urban office um, is in a bad place, strong market, um, but the suburban office market, unless it's an office park, you know, the kind of classic um, 1980s vintage suburban office park, that product is soft, but the smaller office buildings, multi-tenant, uh, those buildings are trading, um, they're selling at a premium on a price per square foot basis. Demand remains uh, resilient for those, those buildings. And this is, this is really the product of downsizing office and locating closer to home. Those are the two primary drivers that we're seeing in this office market. So we are seeing some, you know, ongoing demand and solid, uh, solid performance in the suburban, um, smaller office multi-tenant product, uh, despite what the news is saying. So the data is telling a different story when we look at it specifically for this 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 asset class. So if you have um, if you have questions about this stuff. You know, we're always available to chat. Um, you can hop into our website at mansardcre.com, hit the request a consultation button, and we can uh, set up a 15 minute chat, answer some questions that you might have about the market. You know, we're, we're happy to do that. We spend a lot of time tracking this stuff, pulling this information and in, trending it, analyzing it, and then getting a really you know good idea as to where we are in the market so we can figure out where we're going. And the key is when we're making a market for an asset, um, we wanna understand where in the market cycle we're, we're entering the market so that we can best position the, pro the, the product to get the right buyer who pays the right, right price so that you can sell with confidence. So if you think that you're in a situation where you might be planning on something, maybe 2024, maybe 2025, you're not sure, but you wanna chat about it a little bit, 
Um, typically what would happen is you could call our office. Um, our our reception will receptionist will put you through to one of our four four experts here at the company, and we'll just ask some questions and and we can chat, have a confidential discussion. And if you decide that it makes sense to talk some more, uh, we can prepare an evaluation for you and give you an idea of how the market might receive your property. And if that all sounds like something you'd like to pursue and you feel it's the right next step, um, you can engage us to go to market, execute on our uh, marketing plan, our proprietary sales process, our 42 point process that we run to generate a marketplace for your asset and then produce the right buyer for, to pay the right price. And at that point, you know, guide you through the transaction to close so that ultimately you can celebrate. So if you think that makes sense, you'd like to do that, you can visit us at mansardcre.com. Go to the top right corner of our website, you'll see request a consultation. Um, you, can, you can click there or you can call our office at 617-674-2043.